Shalom, everybody. All right, another Tuesday, we back at it. Give me Baruch chapter 4 and verse 1. I'm going to hit a couple scriptures before I get you out of title. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 1. The book of Baruch chapter 4 and verse 1. Bring it out. This is the book of the commandments of God and, and the law that endureth forever. Read. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Read. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. So that's our job. This is God's book. This is his rules and regulations. That's our job. We're supposed to take heed to these things that's inside the Bible and apply them to our life so that we may be illuminated, meaning be aware of what's happening in today's time. Get Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15 and start at verse 1. The book of Romans, chapter 15 and verse 1. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Not to do what? Please ourselves. Because that's what a lot of us like to do. We, we all about ourselves. We got to be about everybody around us, right? Because we, we going to make the kingdom together. All right? So that requires sacrifice. But go ahead. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good. To edification. And everything that we do, it has to be to edification to those that are without. All right. Come on. For even Christ please not himself. Read that part again. For even Christ please not himself. Christ ain't do what he wanted to do. Go ahead. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. Read. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So we supposed to, with this liberty that we got, we supposed to be learning. Learning was right and applying it, right? Go to Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 34. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 34. Come on. The book of Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 34. Righteousness exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Read it again. Righteousness exalted the nation. So for us to be exalted as the nation of Israel, we have to learn, continuously learn to be righteous, improve in it, grow in it, grow in our righteousness. Read on. But sin is a reproach to any people. The only thing that can stop us is sin. Sin is the only thing that can stop us from getting that kingdom. All right, get that in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. Matthew chapter 5, let's just start at 13. The book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. Come on. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. So without the commandments, guess what? We ain't nothing. And we cast out right now because as a nation of people, we ain't keeping God's commandments. Go ahead. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Read. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Come on. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So we're supposed to be lights. We're supposed to be the living examples of righteousness on earth, meaning we have to do things to edification, as we read before. Get that in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. How do we shine as lights? Because he said, let your light so shine among men that they may see your good works, right? Let's get that. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. The book of Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So we're supposed to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Read. For it is God which worketh in you. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So that's what we're supposed to do. What pleases God. Go ahead. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke 
in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Among whom we what? Ye shine as lights in the world. So that's our job. That's how we're supposed to conduct ourselves in this world. All right, read on. Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. So that's why we got to be righteous examples. You understand? We don't want our labor to be in vain. All right. Now, the title of the class is called Drowning in Lust. I know y'all went over it last week. We going over it again. All right, I got. Uh, I want you to read that. What I put in the uh, in the chat. All right, we're gonna start off with that first. Uh, Seven hundred. Read that. Put it on the screen so everybody can see it, and then read it. Lust is a powerful desire that can take many forms, including sexual desire. Also known as libido, this is the most basic form of lust. It can include physical attraction, sexual hunger, and arousal. Obsession. This can include infatuation with someone or a longing for something or someone. Craving. This can include a temptation or craving for forbidden or taboo experiences. Taboo, exper taboo is going into things... Um yeah, like, uh, you know, uh, immoral things, you know, devilish, heathenish things. All right, keep reading. Escape. Lust can be used as a means of escape or distraction from emotional pain or stress. Mm -hmm. but other desires. Lust can also be directed at other things such as money, power, food. Or a particular smell. For example, someone who is greedy might lust for money, while someone who is gluttonous might lust for food. All right, so we're going to pay it. we going to pay particular attention to sexual desire, money, power, and food. All right. Read 702. I mean, 701. What is the root spirit of lust? On the surface, it may seem that selfishness or lack of self-control are at the heart of lust. Those are contributing factors. You said those are what? Contributing factors. So it says, on the surface, it may seem that self selfishness or lack of self-control are at the heart of lust. But it says those are contributing factors. Go ahead. But the deep root of lust is often emptiness. Emptiness. Go ahead. Individuals may succumb to lust in a vain attempt to fill a vacancy in their life. So sometimes people uh, indulge in their lusts or overindulge in their lusts because they feel empty inside or they're trying to fill a vacancy in their life. Like maybe uh, somebody, you may be lonely, a, a, a sister may want a husband, a man may want a wife. Um, Sometimes when we repent, we may be into sports and things like that, you know, and when you come to serve the Lord, guess what? That lust that you developed over years and years, you got to slowly dial that back. You understand what I'm saying? So you can serve the Lord. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us was in a whole bunch of idolatry, you know what I'm saying, due to our lusts. Things we developed because we've been raised outside of our land, outside of our natural habitat. All right? Um... So now, let's hone in on uh, sexual desire, sexual desire. Give me that in uh, First Ezra. First Ezra chapter 4. First Ezra chapter 4, and give me verse 26. The book of First Ezra chapter 4 and verse 26. Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women. What? Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women. Now listen, we already know. The Negro is a sucker for a beautiful woman. Every time. Go ahead. And become servants for their sake. And become what? Become servants for their sake. Come on. 
Many also have perished, have erred and sinned for women. Erred and sinned for women. We read examples of that. Let's get one. Go to 2 Samuel 11. 2 Samuel chapter 11 and uh, 2, I think. Let's read about David real quick. We ain't going to sit over here, but we're going to read a little bit. Start at verse 2. The book of 2 Samuel chapter 11 and verse 2. Come on. And it came to pass in an evening tide. That David arose from off of his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. The woman was what? Very beautiful to look upon. And that's talking about Bathsheba, Uriah's wife. She was very beautiful to look at. Go ahead. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, is not this Bathsheba? The daughter of Iliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. So he was made aware of who he was looking at. Read. And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him and he lay with her. For she was purified from her uncleanness and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. So David consumed in his lust, end up sleeping with another man's wife. And getting her pregnant. And then later on when you read, he ended up getting him killed. Getting her husband killed. Right? That's how um, sexual desire, that's how far lust can take you to commit murder. And he's the king. And he could have had, he had options. Put it like that. And he was let known that that was another man's wife. And he did it anyway. But when you in your lust... You start doing things absent-minded, right? Give me that um, history, of Zuzana, uh, history of Zuzana. Zuzana, verse 1. There dwelt a man in Babylon c- called Joachim, and he took a wife whose name was Susanna, the daughter of Kelchias, a very fair woman. A what? A very fair woman. Just like Bathsheba. She was beautiful to look upon. Go ahead. And one that feared the Lord. Her parents also were righteous and taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. Hold up. Read that part again. Verse three. Her parents also were righteous. They were righteous. How? And taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. What are these Christians talking about? You're righteous when you taught the law of Moses. Anyway, let's keep reading. Verse four. Now, Joachim was a great rich man and had a, a fair garden joining unto his house. And to him resorted the Jews, because he was more honorable than all others. So everybody gathered at Joachim's house. You know what I'm saying? That was the spot. All right. Go ahead. The same year were appointed two of the ancients of the people to be judges, such as the Lord spake of, that wickedness came from Babylon from ancient judges who seemed to govern the people. Go ahead. These kept much at Joachim's house. And all that had any suits in law came unto them. See that? So the uh, elders kept things at Joachim's house. So Joachim could be trusted. This was a righteous family, right? Go ahead. Now, when the people departed away at noon, Susanna went into her husband's garden to walk. And the two elders saw her going in every day and walking so that their lust was inflamed toward her. They what? Their lust was inflamed toward her. So she ain't doing nothing but being herself, just walking in her garden, just being beautiful. And, and, and Negroes in their lust watching. Go ahead. Verse 9. And they perverted their own mind. Perverts. And turned away their eyes that they, that they might not look unto heaven, nor remember just judgments. And albeit they both were wounded with her love. Yet does not one show another his grief. Come on. For they were ashamed to declare their lust that they desire to have to do with her. Read that part again, verse 11. For they were ashamed to declare their lust. Read that part again. For they were ashamed to declare their lust. One more time. For they were ashamed to declare their lust. Some brothers is walking around here and sisters. They are ashamed to confess that thing. Huh? And they can't handle it. They ain't getting no counsel. They just think they can handle it themselves and privately DMing people. 
and think don't nobody know about it. Message. Real. Verse 11. For they were ashamed to declare their lust that they desired to have to do with her. Yet they watched diligently from day to day to see her. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the one said to the other, let us now go home for it is dinner time. So when they were gone out, they departed the one from the other. And turning back again, they came to the same place. <laughs> so they both like, yeah, man, we're going to go home. We're going home. We dapped, they dapped each other up. The one went the other way, the other went the other way. And then they looking back like, let me see if he gone already. And met right back. Go ahead, read. And after that, they had asked one another the cause. They acknowledged their love. Now they acknowledge their love to each other. Not to, uh, they, and they neither one of them talk each other down. It's like, yo, yo, we tripping, bro. We need, to, we need to get up out of here. Let's see what they did. Then appointed they a time both together when they might find her alone. They start conspiring to, per to, to be a peep, peeping time on this sister. But see, when you in your lust, you can't conduct right judgment. Right? Now, I'm going to tell you something. Give me that in, uh, what's that? Sirach 16. We gonna hold. We gonna stay right there. We coming back right there. Sirach thirteen, read verse fifteen. The book of Sirach, chapter thirteen and verse fifteen. Every beast loveth his like, and every man loveth his neighbor. Come on. All flesh consorteth according to kind, and a man will cleave to his like. A man will what? Will cleave to his like. These two was kindred spirits, so they was in agreement. You understand? They both was dealing with the same demon. Now let's go back. Where was we at? We was at verse 15. The history of Susanna, verse 15. And it fell out as they watched a fit time. She went in as before with two maids only. And she was desirous to wash herself in the garden for it was hot. And there was nobody there save the two elders that had hid themselves and watched her. Then she said to her maids, bring me oil and washing balls and shut the garden doors that I may wash me. And they did as she bade them and shut the garden doors and went out themselves at privy doors to fetch the things that she had commanded them. But they saw not the elders because they were hid. Now, when the maids were gone forth, the two elders rose up and ran unto her, saying, behold, the garden doors are shut that no man can see us. And we are in love with thee. Therefore, consent unto us and lie with us. Now, you got to picture this scene. This lady thinking she by herself, taking a bath, and two men come up, two old men run up to her, acting as if they didn't had conversation with her before. They talking to her like, you know what I'm saying, like, like they cool like that. Thou will not. We will bear witness against thee that a young man was with thee. And therefore thou didst sent away thy maids from thee. Then Susanna sighed and said, I am straightened on every side. For if I do this thing, it is death unto me. You see that? Read. And if I do it not, I cannot escape your hands. It is better for me to fall into your hands and not do it than to sin in the sight of the Lord. Read that verse again. Verse 23. It is better for me to fall into your hands and not do it. Than to sin in the sight of the Lord. This is a testament to her upbringing. You understand? Go back. Read verse 3. Verse 3. Her parents also were righteous and taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. She feared God. That's why she had the faith to sin. But she was putting a rock in a hard spot. You understand what I'm saying? But she like, yo, I ain't finna deal with the Lord on this. I'd rather deal with y'all. You understand what I'm saying? She feared God, not them. She had faith that the Lord was going to pull her out of that. Right, integrity. Come on, read. Drop back to verse, where is we at? 24. Verse 24. With that, Susanna cried with a loud voice, and the two elders cried out against her. Then ran the one and opened the garden door. So when the servants of the house heard the cry in the garden, they rushed in at a privy door to see what was done unto her. But when the elders had declared their matter, the servants were greatly ashamed. They came also full of mischievous imagination against Susanna to put her to death. To do what? To put her to death. So now since, since she didn't want to commit that evil act with them, they tried to kill her. 
But see, they weren't king like David. They didn't have the power. David just put Uriah to death. You understand what I'm saying? Go ahead. And said before the people. Hold on, hold on. We got something. Yeah, yeah. You was about to get that too? Oh, you didn't see. We in the spirit. Um, Read that back in uh, History of Susanna. Read verse 24. Let's go back to the point obviously Uzziah just made about in verse 3 when it says her parents also were righteous and taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. This is an exact example. Read verse 24 real quick. The History of Susanna. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. With that, Susanna cried with a loud voice. And the two elders cried out against her. Then so it, that's it. That's it. So the point we wanted out of that says when uh, with Susanna cried with a loud voice. That's according to the law of Moses. Go to Deuteronomy chapter twenty-two, and what is it? Verse is it twenty-two? 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 Somewhere around there. Twenty-three? Twenty-six? Okay. Reverse twenty-five. Reverse twenty-five. The book of Deuteronomy chapter twenty-two. So why did she do that? Why she scream and yell? Read. In verse 25, mm -hmm. but if a, a man find a betrothed damsel in the field and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. So it's talking about rape, which is what those men was trying to do to Susanna. Jump down to verse 27. Verse 27, for he found her in the field mm -hmm. and the betrothed damsel cried. So she did what? Cried. Read. And there was none to save her. So that So the reason why... It says she cried. That go back to verse 25 when it says only that man will be put to death. So if she were to get raped and she wasn't, somebody came in. She screamed and then people came to come find her, right? But if she didn't scream and just didn't do nothing, then she would be found guilty according to the law of Moses. That's why it's important that we teach our kids what to do in certain situations. But that's it. Right. Go ahead. Yeah, you notice that uh, both of these... Uh in both stories we read in the history of Susanna as well as in, um, we was reading in, what was that? Samuel, Second Samuel. Notice that both of them, uh, it was a beautiful woman involved in both situations. You know what I'm saying? And the men was, you know what I'm saying? They lust took, overtook them where they couldn't even actually, uh, they couldn't even think about the laws no more. They, they minds was just, just gone and oblivious because, you know, the beautiful woman had taken them. But, you know, there is laws in the scripture that kind of tells you to avoid this type of behavior. So give me real quick. Give me Sirach chapter 9 and verse 8. Because, you know, both of them got caught looking. David, King David got caught looking at Bathsheba. She was sitting there with her clothes off bathing. And then they got they caught uh, Sister, Sister Susanna. She was in the, in the bathtub as well bathing. So they caught her in another Wild situation, okay? But notice what the Bible says. Read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 9 and verse 8. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman. So notice it says, turn away your eyes from a beautiful woman. So you see a woman, you know what I'm saying, in, in a situation. You got to turn your eyes. You can't, you can't sit there staring at things like that, gaping your mouth. Go ahead. And look not upon another's beauty. Mm -hmm. For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. So it says many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. Both, both brothers was deceived. Those two elders as well as King David, who was the elder as well. They was all deceived by the beauty of a woman. Go ahead. For herewith love is kindled as a fire. And that fire burns so deep that, you know, you can't even think no more. You is on fire. You were, you enlisted and things like that. That's why you got to learn how to turn your eyes from situations like that so you can be in better shape. Facts. Uh, let's keep reading. Where was we at? Verse 29. The history of Susanna. Verse 29. And said before the people, send for Susanna, the daughter of Kelchias, Joachim's wife. And so they sent. So she came with her father and her and mother, her children and all her kindred. Now, Susanna was a very delicate woman and beauty, beauteous to behold. And these wicked men commanded to uncover her face, for she was covered, that, might, that they might be filled with her beauty. See that? Man, like, they, like, this, see, she had to be the most beautiful woman in the world. <laughs> Drop down to verse 41. Verse 41. Then the assembly believed them. As those that were the elders and judges of the people. So they condemned her to death. You see that? Just because they couldn't get their way with this woman, they condemned her to death. Now, when you read on, 
uh, Daniel end up getting out of that, you know what I'm saying, being a young man with wisdom, you know what I'm saying, but this is how far lust could take you, you understand, that's the point, that's why these things are written down, all right, so we mindful, get that in Job chapter 31 and verse 1. The book of Job chapter 31 and verse 1. I made a covenant with mine eyes. I did what? I made a covenant with mine eyes. Some of y'all, some of you brothers need to make a covenant with your eyes. You can't handle it. You understand what I'm saying? Read. Why then should I think upon a maid? Some of y'all don't need to be thinking about a woman right now. Because you're going to become her servant. It is what it is. The book of Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 25. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart. Neither let her take thee with her eyelids. It says, lust not after her beauty in your heart. Meaning, don't go home and sit on the bed and meditate and looking at a picture on a, a, a profile picture and just, just lust. Because <laughs> you might end up DMing her. <laughs> God, you kidding me. Get to Rock 25 and 21. Rock 25 and 21. The book, of, the book of Sirach, chapter 25 and verse 21. Stumble not at the beauty of a woman and desire her not for pleasure. Read that last part again. And desire her not for pleasure. One more time. And desire her not for pleasure. Don't desire. We ain't supposed to be lusting after, these, after, our, after women, man. We ain't supposed to just lust after them. You understand what I'm saying? We ain't supposed to treat women like they just objects. They have a role, right? They help meets first, right? Read it again. Stumble not at the beauty of a woman. Because women are beautiful, so don't stumble at it. Go ahead. And desire her not for pleasure. And don't desire her for pleasure only, all right? Now give me that in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 28. You know, when we come up, when we co coming up out of the world, that's all we looked at a woman for. We were never looking to get married and things like that. All we was looking for a woman for is, is lust. That was it. You understand what I'm saying? Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Most of y'all know what I'm talking about. 99% of y'all know what I'm talking about. The you know book what I'm of saying? I got news for you, sisters. He didn't love you. Read. The book of Matthew. Chapter 5 and verse 28. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Read what Jesus said again. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. You see that? That's why he said in Proverbs, don't lust after her in your mind. You understand? Y'all committing, the, brothers is committing adultery in their mind. You understand? We got to learn how to control our thoughts. How do we do that? Proverbs 16. Now, we all battling with it. So, that's why we got to continuously go over this type of stuff. Proverbs chapter 16. And um, look around. You see what I want? It's right there somewhere. I know it's in Proverbs 16. Come on, bro. You teach on the street every day. 16, uh, 3. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16 and verse 3. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. And thy what? And thy thoughts shall be established. That's how you establish your thoughts, when you're constantly in the work. You understand what I'm saying? Because guess what? When you sit and idle, you ain't doing nothing but lusting after a woman. That's just the, that's, that's the truth. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. That's what we doing. All right. Now, <sighs> give me Psalms 55 and 17. Let's get into some solutions. Psalms 55 and verse 17. The book of Psalms, chapter 55 and verse 17. If I'm battling lust, what are some of the actions I can take to get this, this, this lust spirit off of me? Read. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray. And cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Prayer helps, right? Morning, noon, and night, we're supposed to pray. Pray for the Lord to get that spirit off you. You understand? Get that in Matthew chapter 17. 
Matthew chapter 17 and verse 21. The book of Matthew chapter 17 and verse 21. How be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Prayer and what? And fasting. You need to, might need to fast a little more. Just You need, may need to fast more than just the voluntary fast. You might need to fast a couple times a week. You understand? To get that. These are, these are actions that the Lord telling us to take to show that we got faith that he can do for us. You have to take those actions. Right? Hey, officer. Go ahead. Right, because you know the fasting builds up your spirit. It builds up your endurance. If you can hold with the hold yourself from eating what you got to do to survive, you can hold yourself from your lust. And, you know, the fact of the matter is it's hard to think about booty when you're hungry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just throw that out there. Right, 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 right. Tobit. <laughs> Tobit chapter 12. The book of Tobit. Chapter 12 and verse 8. Prayer is good with fasting. How is prayer good? Prayer is good with fasting. Because some of us, just, we just pray only. We don't do no fasting. Go ahead. But it's good with what? With fasting. Prayer is good with fasting. And alms. And what? And alms. You ain't giving no alms. You ain't giving no alms. You ain't helping nobody. You ain't even putting two, using your hands to help to pick up nothing. You understand? You just praying to the Lord. But prayer is good how? With fasting and alms mm -hmm. and righteousness. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. You see that thing? So these are all the actions we have to take to get these demons off of us. All right? If it ain't, if what you currently doing ain't working, how about trying to do what Christ said? How about doing that? And if you're doing that, how about you do it a little bit more? Won't you increase it? The scriptures say pray without ceasing. The guideline is just three times a day. You can do it more. You can pray more than three times a day. Right? You can fast more than the voluntary fast than the, that the elders set up for us. Right? You can give alms a little more consistently. You can contribute in your committee a little more. You understand? Message. All right. Uh, no, no, no. Same scripture. Prayer, fast, and the arms. It's, that's like a secret right there. That's like that's a, that's a Da Vinci Code right there. Yeah. People don't understand. So that's like, it's something that's simple. You just got to apply. If you know you're about to pray and you fast, give arms too. Do it all together. The scriptures say that. And when you do that, you will start to learn. The Lord teach you, you know, and show you things in your fasting. And on a note, Fasting. When you fasting, you go without. Yeah, I know how sometimes we struggle in life. You know, uh, you might ain't got the the bill money all the way. You know, things happening. The car broke down. Life happens, and you gotta learn to be patient and go without for a time. But some of y'all, when y'all, when when tragic things that happen, tragic things happen in life, we we start you know losing faith. But when you praying and you ain't got that food for that, for you know, you go without food and stuff, they teach you to endure trials because it don't feel good. And when you fast, you're hungry. Likewise, when we go through life matters. When we praying and fasting and it don't feel good, they teach us to endure our trials and tribulations that we're going to have through life. That's it. Right. All right. Now we're going to move on to money. Because money is one of the lusts that we drown in. Money is one of the lusts we drown in. Give me that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 6. Lust for money. Come on. The book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which he received of us. Come on. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us. For we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. So the Lord says, set your friendship aright. Go ahead. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. So Paul said that they worked. So can't nobody say they did nothing to support what they was doing there. They wasn't a burden on nobody. 
You know what I'm saying? You know how people like to purposely burden themselves on just throw all just, just throw all their problems on you. Like you ain't got no problems. You know what I'm saying? Come on, read. Verse 9. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. So you have to be example. Remember, we read in the beginning of the class, we supposed to be examples. We we part of the first fruits coming in. Right? We the examples of righteousness on the earth. But go ahead. Verse 10, for even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. So you should be and you should be doing something to pro provide, to uh, sustain yourself. If you got a family, to provide for your family to feed everybody, right? You have to work. God says men have to work. It just is what it is. You got to work, right? It's the scripture that say hate not laborious work, right? Come on, read Verse 11, for we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Guess what? If you ain't got no job, you a busybody. You in everybody business because you got time. Remember, idleness teaches much, much evil. You understand? Come on, read. Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ. That with quietness they work and eat their own bread. Provide for yourself. Go ahead. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Come on. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. So shouldn't nobody be teaching against that? You know what I'm I mean, teaching against what we just read right there. Everybody got to work. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody trying to hear no, your excuses. Unless you got some type of disability, you need to be going to work somewhere. All right? Come on. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. So we supposed to be, if you ain't working, guess what? We supposed to exhort our brothers to work. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Y'all on point today. Yo, go ahead. Verse 16. Now the Lord of peace himself Give you peace always. By all means, the Lord be with you all. So ain't nothing wrong with exhorting, you know, telling the brother, hey, yo, go get a damn job. You understand what I'm saying? Anyway. Can, can we get the flip side of that? Go ahead. Get uh, 1 Timothy 5 and 13. Because that's, that's talking about the man. But it's also a flip side for the women. Because we got a lot of women in here, right? Hopefully they all work part Lord's will. Read that. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 5 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. And with all, they learn to be idle. Uh, read verse 11 and read verse 13. Verse 11. But the younger widows refuse. For when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry. Right. So it's talking about the young women. The widows, a widow is a woman. I just want to establish that. Now I read verse 13. Verse 13. And with all, they learn to be idle. Right. So then these women were sitting around not doing nothing. They ain't married no more. And they became idle. Read that. Wandering about from house to house. Uh -huh. And not only idle, but tattlers Read. also. Uh -huh. And busybodies. Ain't that the same word it just said back in Second Thessalonians? Uh, what a man was going to be a busy. Yep, that's the same word. It says not work. It says working not at all, but are busybodies. And these men and these women, they find each other. Read that. Yep. Keep reading. Yes, sir. Speaking things which they ought not. Ain't that's what the, the DMs and whatever hell else go on. But yeah, that's 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 heavy right there. Yeah, those men and those women, they find each other when they idle, not doing what they're supposed to be doing. That's it. Right. That's God's warning against idleness. All right, jump over to chapter six, read verse six. So the Lord said, Yo, get money. You gotta have money. Get the money. But watch this, read. First Timothy chapter six and verse six. But godliness with contentment is great gain. You see that? God says be content. That's a that's great gain. Come on. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Come on. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Come on. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Which drown men in destruction and perdition. Come on. For the love of money is the root of all evil. You see that? So money's not bad. It says what? Read that verse again. For the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root to all evil. 
So if you using your job to not keep the Sabbath, you fall into this right here. Which while some coveted after. They they what? Coveted after. So you could get to the point to where when you're getting money that you can start coveting it. And you're putting it above your service of God. Jump back up to verse 6. Verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. He said godliness with contentment with godliness with contentment. That's great gain. Now, he didn't say that when he's talking about uh, striving to be rich. Drop back down to verse 10. Verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. He said when you got. Well, keep reading. Keep reading. Which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So the more money you got, Lord, they say, what, the, what the rapper say in the world, more money, more problems. That's what happened every time. Right. More money, more devils. All right. It say it say the root of all evils because we got situations where the daughter go get a job, she get that money. What happened? Pew. Uh-huh. So likewise, the son he get that job. She go spread them wide open for some negro. Damn. Every time. That what they do. It's it's the root of it. So it's like the it's like a tree. It say the root to all evil. You look at all the evil on the tree, but the root to get to all of this evil, you got to get what? You got to get that money. And once you access the money, you can get to every branch on that tree. Whether it's lust, homosexuality, some people to that, you know, I don't know, all kind of evil, you know. Damn. Listen, you ain't met nobody until you seen them with some money. I'm going to tell you. You don't even know yourself for real till you get some money. Huh? Message. <laughs> yeah. Right, because you got to remember though, because money is going to allow you to do a lot of things. There's those hurtful lusts and things like that. Because now that you have money, you have access to more things. Like you have access to maybe a fancy car, and fancy cars lead to uh, gold diggers or the women that's chasing after you and things of that nature. And when you start, you start attracting those women that you ain't never had a chance right. with. You walking around bald headed now. You All got sudden, twenty you women after you. <laughs> I'm Denzel. I'm Denzel. <laughs> So no, you ain't Denzel. <laughs> Congratulations. You played yourself. There you go. All right, give Mark uh uh Mark six. Mark six read verse one. So the Lord said, get a job and be content, man. The book of Mark, chapter six and verse one. And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Come on. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary? Is not this the what? The carpenter. The what? The carpenter. Listen, Christ was a carpenter. He made an honest living. All right. Get that. Acts chapter 18. Acts 18 and 1. The book of Acts chapter 18 and verse 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. Because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought. For by their occupation, they were tent makers. Paul was a what? Tent maker. So Paul made tents. These are the, the, our examples. These are who we look up to. A carpenter and a tent maker. Okay. Colossians 4, 14. The book of Colossians, chapter 4 and verse 14. So when you look at this, what is what what are men really chasing the money for? Women. Hey, bro, come on now, dog. Yeah. Message. <laughs> Colossians 4, verse 14. Come on. Colossians, chapter 4 and verse 14. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. So Luke was a physician. All right. Give me that in Sirach chapter 40. 
So the Lord isn't a, isn't is isn't against work. You gotta work, all right? But guess what? Don't get to the point to where you lusting after money, you coveting after money, because guess what? A whole bunch of demons come with mountains of money. Understand that. All right. Uh Sirach 40, give me verse 18. The book of Sirach, chapter 40 and verse 18. To labor and to be content with that a man hath is a sweet life. Read it again. To labor and to be content with that a man hath is a sweet life. Brothers be working 70, 80, 90 hours a week. It ain't to make ends meet. It's just because you lusting after money. This boat on lost his mind. It is what it is. Not in bled over into working Sabbaths. Come on. But he that findeth a treasure is above them both. Now, give me that in um, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 11. Philippians chapter 4. I always forget. Philippians is. All right, there it is. Verse 11. Come on. The book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, Therewith to be content. You see that? Because guess what? Serving the Lord, some you're gonna be up some and you're gonna be down some. It's a roller coaster. You're gonna have a good year and you might have two bad years. You're gonna have two good years and you have three bad years. And just be like that. You understand what I'm saying? We ain't in the kingdom. You understand what I'm saying? We wasn't brought over here to have the 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 uh the the, the big house with the white picket fence and the uh the um what's that little dog they always have in the commercials? The Labrador, the Golden Retriever. Yeah, the Golden Retriever. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Hey, that's a that's a heavy point because um in the Christian church, that's the message that when you come to the church right. and you give your your alms, you get your offering, that the Lord gonna bless you financially and you're gonna be set, and that's the that's the kingdom. That's you being saved. Once you get him that money, and then Damn. you get your then you get you gonna get the blessing. That's being saved. And what's funny, I grew up in the church, and when I had I came to truth young, but when I came to the truth, I was like, I knew I was like, man, it's some good information. This is the truth. And in my mind, I didn't know no better. I'm like, this is how the Lord, that's how I'm gonna get rich. I'm like, this this was gonna make me be okay in life. I'm going to be all right. I ain't going to have no more problems. I'm thinking that, right? No, that's not the truth. That's that's Christianity. Christianity teach you that as soon as you start following God, everything going to be all right. But that's not what the Bible says. Like you said, it's going to be ups and downs. So that's important to know. Stop listening to them pastors. Ha! Right. Hey, play that video I just put in there, man. I just, this ain't got nothing to do with nothing. But, you know, any, I, I, I just got to take a shot at Christianity because I just like doing that. So what? Do something. Play that video. It's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Look, like I said, they I was doing to, that in your church. See, I went to church almost my long I, before I could remember. I was in the church. I had a cousin, and he would he would be going when he got old. He started to you know go down the wrong path. He got into drugs and gangs and all that. But he had come to the church occasionally, and every time he come to the church, that's exactly what he would do. <laughs> And right after church, after he didn't caught the Holy Ghost, dude outside behind the church smoking weed, Bruh. selling drugs behind the church right Bruh. after church, after he didn't caught the Holy Ghost. You, you ain't know he went in there and he stole out the collection plate. He did. Bruh. He did that. He did do that before. <laughs> but, he caught, but he had the Holy Ghost. Bruh. <laughs> All that was a smoke screen, so he can get that. He came around collection plate time. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> All right, go to Luke. Luke three. And verse 12. So the Lord is not against money. He's against the love of it. Don't covet. Don't lust after it. All right. Money is a tool to bring forth the kingdom. All right. 
If you ain't giving no alms, what you making money for? All right, all right, all right. Uh, give me Luke 3. Let's start at verse 12. Going into uh, how to conduct ourselves on the job. Come on. The book of Luke, chapter 3 and verse 12. Then came also publicans to be baptized and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed you. Do your job. Come on. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. Be what? And be content with your wages. You see that? Do your job. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you signed up for, whatever they paying you, be content with that. And, you know, if you want something better, ain't nothing wrong with striving to, be, to better yourself. You understand what I'm saying? But don't be on the job causing problems. You understand what I'm saying? Because remember, we're supposed to let our light shine. We ain't supposed to be in the midst of no confusion. All right? Let's go into power. All right? Power. Lust for power. All right? Get that in Sirach chapter 7. Sirach chapter 7. And let's read verse 4. The book of Sirach. Chapter 7 and verse 4. Seek not of the Lord preeminence, neither of the king the seat of honor. So the scripture says, seek not of the Lord preeminence. Meaning, don't do things with the intentions of gaining authority or power over your brethren. All right. The Lord called us to be servants of the people. All right. We're supposed to be in service of the people. All right. All right, give me that in uh, 3 John 9 and 11. Let's talk about diatrephes. You know, we always got to go here. You know what I'm saying? We got to keep reading this to keep that spirit down. Right? 3 John, verse 9. The book of the third epistle of John, verse 9. I wrote unto the church, but diatrephes, who love it to have the preeminence. He loved what? To have the preeminence. Among them receiveth us not. This dude got so, in his lust for power, didn't receive the one, the, the, the apostles who, was, who, was, who Christ was directly dealing with. That's crazy. Right. They put him, who gave him the, 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 the rank he had, or the authority, the authority he had. Go ahead. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he doeth. Pratting against us with malicious words mm -hmm. and not content therewith. And not what? Content therewith. Because he had a lust for power. You understand? Not understanding his role as a servant. Right? Go ahead. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren and forbiddeth them that would and casteth them out of the church. He kicking people out the church that went to go see the people that gave him his, his seat. That's crazy. But when you're in the midst of your lust, you're not thinking straight. You're not thinking clearly. Right? Get that in Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. And verse 1. The book of Luke chapter 7 and verse 1. Now when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. So the centurion, he sent his servant was sick. He sent men to seek to, to, to get Christ to come help him. So this man, he has some power. He has some status. He has some authority over people. Right. Let's see how he conducted himself. Come on. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. They said, this man is worthy for you to heal. Go ahead, read. For he loveth our nation. He did what? He loveth our nation. How was he worthy? He loveth our nation. He loveth his nation. Go ahead. And he hath built us a synagogue. He did what? Built us a synagogue. Hey, see that? Big arm right there. You understand? Come on, read. Then Jesus went with them. And when he was now... Hold not, up, Jesus didn't question them. What did he do? 
Jesus went with them. Christ got up and left. He's like, come on, where you at? See that? Read. And when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Come on. Wherefore, neither that neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. Because that's why he sent men, because he didn't feel, even though he had power and authority, he didn't feel like he was worthy. So he sent other men to go, this, he, may, he ain't going to say no to them. You understand what I'm saying? Come on, read. But say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man set under authority. He had authority. Go ahead. Having under me soldiers. And I say unto one, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Come on. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. And they that. Why did he say that? Because he didn't even feel like he was worthy. Even though he had power and authority and things like that, he didn't mistreat his people. You see that thing? The man humbled himself. Right? Go ahead. Read. And they that were sent, returning to the house, found the servant whole that had been sick. You see that? The Lord healed him. Now give me that in Matthew chapter 23 and verse 12. Matthew 23 and verse 12. So as we increase in knowledge and wisdom and responsibility, we always got to remain humble. Go ahead, read. The book of Matthew chapter 23 and verse 12. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. Read it again. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. Don't exalt yourself. Come on. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Who is the Lord going to exalt? Read it again. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. You see that? Just humble yourself. It's good to be humble. You know, the Lord will exalt you. All right. In due time. In due time. Get that in First Peter 5 and verse 6. The book of First Peter, chapter 5 and verse 6. Come on. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. That he may exalt you in due time. Because that's who exalts everyone, the Lord. All right, read it again. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. In due time, meaning his time, he's going to exalt you. His time. Matthew 18 and 4. The book of Matthew, chapter 18 and verse 4. Whosoever, therefore, shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Read it again. Whosoever, therefore, shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Why is Christ using a little child, for example? Because a child does what he's told. They don't understand right and from wrong unless they're being taught it. Right? If you leave a child alone, guess what he's going to do? He's going to be evil. It just is what it is. If you leave a child by themselves, they just going to be evil. It just is what it is. They have to be taught righteousness so you have to humble yourself so you can receive the understanding all right that's the mindset we got we got to stay in it with all of the wisdom and knowledge that we gaining from our leadership you still got to stay humble stay humble right don't think that you're above the people that we out there going out there to teach and stuff like that don't think that you understand? We all we the scriptures say we more excellent, but we still gotta gather the people in. The scriptures say one third gotta repent. You understand? Now, uh give me that in second Peter three and verse eighteen. The book of Second Peter, chapter three and verse eighteen. But grow in grace. What? But grow in grace. Grow with this time we got, come on. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We suppose with this time we got, we supposed to be growing in the knowledge, growing in understanding. Go ahead. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. You can't grow if can't nobody tell you nothing. If you know it all, you can't grow. You don't get no counsel, you can't grow. You don't ask for help, you can't grow. Right? All right. What time we got? I can't. Uh, I'm finna, all right, we're going to move fast on this one. I, I want to move on to food. Let's y'all got something else on that topic. We're going to move on to food. I got to hit this. I got to hit this. Uh, go to Sirach 30 and 15. 
the book of Sirach, chapter 30 and verse 15. Health and good estate of body are above all gold. Read it again. Health and a good estate of body are above all gold. And a strong body above infinite wealth. You see that? God said health and good estate of body are above all gold. So we have to we have to have uh we gotta start looking and paying more attention to what we putting inside our bodies and regulating that. Right? Not just eating till you full, you know. That's how we we've trained ourselves to do, right? The book of Sirach, chapter 31 and verse 16. Eat as it becometh a man, those things which are set before thee, and devour not, lest thou be hated. Lest thou be hated, go ahead. Leave off first for manner's sake, and be not unsatiable, lest thou offend. Lest thou offend, meaning don't be greedy, man. Go ahead. When thou sittest among many, reach not thine hand out first of all. A very little. You know what? When I used to, back in the world, you know what I'm saying? You used to see that that scripture plays out a lot. You know that person always trying to be first in line. You know what I'm saying? They want to get the biggest, they looking for the, the biggest piece of whatever it is. You know, it's got to be first to everything. Go ahead. Hey, that's a that's a good scripture. It say, "Don't be the first, right? To put your hand out. Where it say, uh, reach not thy hand out first of all.' So, they say they put some food on the table, right? We all about to eat or whatever. How could you not be the first one to put your hand? Out? Somebody got to be the first, right? That mean you, if you you can make a plate for somebody else, you can make a plate for that's manners. It's teaching you manners. Hey, you know how that's what uh people do when they like. I don't want to say at church, but like an old older. Time, you got right? a lot of church memories, huh? Now, old time, bro, uh, you know, you know, the church is in great. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> got him. Yeah, I got you, I got you. I feel you, bro. <laughs> uh, uh, 30 and 25, Sirach 30 and 25. The book of Sirach, chapter 30 and verse 25. A cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. No, uh, Captain um, Shim read this verse all the time. Read it again. A cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. So guess what? If you always depressed all the time, you talking about your problems all the time, and you know you just woe is me all the time. You look like that. You know, he he ain't got no cheerful and good heart. You know, <laughs> don't no, ever show that again. I don't want to see that. Dang. That was who so it was a, that? It was a clip on that in uh, Nutty Professor. Remember, he was all depressed and he was just stuffing his safe face with all the food and the peanuts and the. Oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that depression, depression. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. I was trying to say in that scripture. Read it one more time. A cheerful and a good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. Right, because how you look and what you eat is a reflection of what's inside your mind. That's what it's saying. So you can tell somebody, if you see somebody, that all they eat is, <laughs> what I say, the honey hot wings and cheese fries. <laughs> That's the black people's special. <laughs> uh, uh, fish and chicken, you know what I'm saying? That's all they eat. Y'all never see them with a can of Fruit or, you know, a pineapple or apple or nothing. It's just honey, hot wings and cheese fries. <laughs> Never nothing healthy. <laughs> Man. Of course, that's what it's saying right there. It tells you about their mind, how they think and how they feel about themselves. So, y'all be mindful of that. Right. If you got a curve for your diet, that means you're actually going to think and plan out what you're going to eat. You're not just... You know, not just ride down the street like, damn, there go canes. Right. I want me some chicken fingers. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't just, every time you see something, like, oh, I want some of that. Oh, I want some of that. You see some food, put like, oh, give me some of that. No, nah, but you got to actually think about what you're going to eat. You know what I'm saying? You got to plan out your meals. And you come home, you know, you come home and eat, eat, eat wisely. All right? Hey. Right, you the eight. Boy, you see that neck on that boy? And it was terrible. That ain't no neck. Where the neck at? <laughs> no, never mind. Let's huh? stop. <laughs> nah, you, hey, listen. If you eating fast food four times a week, you got a problem. You got a problem. Three, four times a week you eating fast food, you got a problem. Something's wrong. You don't have a care for your diet. You hate yourself. 
Understand. Sirach 37 to 27. Sirach 37 and verse 27. Come on. The book of Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 27. My son, prove thy soul in thy life and see what is evil for it and give not that unto it. You see that God is telling you to discipline yourself. We have to be, we have to do all things in moderation except serve the Lord. You're supposed to do that 10 times harder. But everything else is in moderation. Understand, read. For all things are not profitable for all men. You see that? Everything is not profitable. Come on. Neither hath every soul pleasure in everything. Come on. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing. Don't be greedy. Come on. Nor too greedy upon meat. Just because the candy came in a big ass box don't mean you got to eat the whole box in one sitting. That's what it's saying. Go ahead. For excess of meat, read 29 again. Verse 29, be not unsatiable in any dainty thing. Quit stuffing your mouth. Come on. Nor too greedy upon meat. Don't be eating too much meat. All right. Don't be greedy on meat. Brothers eating chicken every day. Brothers that ate chicken, it's 30 days in a month. Brothers that ate chicken 27 days or ate some, some flesh 27 days out of the month. You don't have a care for your diet. Verse 30, come on. For excess of meat bringeth sickness and surfeiting. And then you got brothers saying they sick every other week. And, be, and look the most healthy. Look the most healthy every week. I'm sick. Every other week, I'm sick. Damn. Biceps bulging. Abs 12 pack. Bruh. Sick every other week. How is that possible? Hold up. Hold <laughs> Read verse 30 again. For excess of meat bringeth sickness. Come on. And surfeiting will turn into cola. Diarrhea. You doodling on yourself. Uncontrollable doodle. That's what it's saying. Hey, go Hell to, no. Go to uh, real quick. Uh, first Peter's 2 and 11. Real quick. It's crazy. <laughs> So, uh, first Peter's 2 and 11. The book of... Real quick. The book of First Peter's chapter 2 and verse 11. Uh -huh. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. As what? As strangers and pilgrims. It says strangers and pilgrims because we all new to this truth. Right? In the world, they taught us you got to have three meals. They got to be full course. In order to have a healthy, stable diet, you got to eat meat. Every day, you got to have some type of meat. We learn that now in this truth, it's not like that. You know what I'm saying? Through the scripture, you read, you eat a little meat here, but you got to have a well-balanced diet. You got to small in your portions. You got to eat less meat. But he said, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims because this information is new to us. We got to take this information and we got to use it. Right? Read it again. Dearly beloved. I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, uh -huh. abstain from fleshly lust. This fleshly lust. Food is a lust. Come on. Which war against the soul. Now watch this. Jump up to verse 10. I'm going to prove the strangers and pilgrims because we new to this truth. Watch this. Come on. Verse 10. Which in time past were not a people. In times past, we was African Americans with an African American mindset, an American, the standard American diet. Come on. But are now the people of God. Come on. Which had not obtained mercy, uh -huh. but now have obtained mercy. So now you're getting an understanding on a, a well-balanced diet. You understand? Um, that's it on it. Right. Go back to Sirach. Uh, what's that? 37 and read verse 31. The book of Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 31. By surfeiting have many perished. But he that taketh heed prolongeth his life. So take heed because it's going to extend your life. Now go back to the uh, the chat and read that uh, that that uh, seven o two again. Read that in the telegram. What is the root spirit of lust? On the surface, it may seem that selfishness or lack of self control are at the heart of lust. Those are contributing factors, but the deep root of lust is often emptiness, 
Individuals may succumb to lust in a vain attempt to fill a vacancy in their life. So you got to ask yourself, is, is what you lust now, if you keep succumbing to this lust, what it is, you understand? You got to identify it. Once you identify it, you need to replace it. This is how. Baruch 4 and 28. The book of Baruch, chapter 4 and verse 28. For as it was your mind to go astray from God. When you was your mind to uh, go astray from God, uh, going astray from God's dietary law. He said, eat in moderation, not stuff your face to your to this full or eat 10 cakes in one sitting right go ahead so being returned seek him 10 times more that's how you redeem the time constantly immersing yourself in the work learning how to serve the lord learning how to uh apply his laws properly right and increasing in that knowledge all right all right one last look point on on grubbing all right so you got to think about it like this um all right i want i want to get sirach chapter 31 and uh verse 20 because sometimes when you eat too much you know what i'm saying you will you will find yourself um sick you know what i'm saying that's that's what we were reading about eating it causes you to be sick you wake up not feeling well and things like this but this is what the bible says about eating and controlling your appetite read that the book of Sirach, chapter 31 and verse 20. Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. So when you eat moderately, you wake up, you feel good. You know what I'm saying? You feel good about yourself. You can move about your day. You can move quick. You can get up and you can be on, you be on your wits. Go ahead. He riseth early and his wits are with him. Mm -hmm. But the pain of watching and cola and pains of the belly or with an insatiable man. So you wake up with your stomach hurting. You're like, oh, man, I'm feeling, you're feeling stroggy. You got to do early in the morning. Right. And you just stuck on the toilet for like hours. You wake up, got to go doo-doo. Look at their face. You're making, I'm making those faces. <laughs> ah! Ah! It's just rough. All right, so you got you to gotta control yourself so that you can actually feel good. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll be feeling terrible when you wake up in the morning. All right, and we all know how it feels to overeat. And we also know how it feels to eat moderately. So we got to learn how to, you got to know yourself and, and actually apply those things that the Bible talks about. That way you'll feel a lot better about yourself. Right. Hebrews 2 verse 1. <laughs> the book of Hebrews, chapter 2 and verse hey, 1. Uh, oh, one, one, one thing. Matthews, real quick. On empty. The uh, title, read the title again um, on a lust thing real quick. Before we close it out, Matthew's two. It was seven o two. That uh, that the the lust, the empty. I want just the empty. The, the put the yeah. R read that uh. The second sentence. Yep, yes, second sir. sentence. Those are contributing factors, but the deep root of lust is often emptiness. Emptiness, right? Just real quick, Matthew's uh twenty. What is it? Matthew's twenty two or uh, twenty three. For man gone and find it in empty. That's what I was uh, reading. Matthews, what is it? Matthews 20. I was just reading. Oh, uh. Yes. I, was, I know it's at the bottom of the page on the left hand side. I just <laughs> highlighted it. He find it is swept and empty. That's Matthews 12 and 44. Matthews 12 and 44. Real quick. The book of Matthew, chapter 12 and verse 44. Mm -hmm. then 40, he, 43. 43, yep. Verse 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. Those unclean spirits were often just going over sex, your grief for sex, money, uh, and power, food. Food. Yep. Lust, the lust for money, power, and food. There you go. Greedy, being greedy. Read on. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. Those, those thoughts coming back to you, that old lust. Read. And when he has come, he findeth it empty. You see what we read? It said the root of lust is emptiness. Anytime you feel like you have to go out your way to sin, it's because uh, you got that low self-esteem in your, in your spirit. It's because the spirit of Christ is not abiding in you. And when you feel yourself at that all-time low, that's what he was saying, fasting and pray. David said, take not your spirit from me. 
You got to go to Christ. You got to go to the Father and ask for that spirit so you don't have that need to go fulfill your lust because you're empty inside. That's it. All praises. Read uh, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. The book of Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. So, Lord's will, y'all got something out of this? Shalom, most high praise place. We will work with anybody and form coalition with anybody that has revolution on their mind. We might not be back. I might be in jail. I might be anywhere. But when I leave, you can remember I said with the last words on my lips that I am a revolutionary. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. We want freedom by any means necessary. We want justice by any means necessary. This is a revolution of God. This time that we live in it, the greatest time on earth, revolution. A spiritual and biblical revolution. All these lives will be shut down this earth. I live in it. I'm all in, front line with the truth, I'ma fall in, even if it's a dead end going all in.